Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's token engineering session. We'll discuss token engineering careers, and I'm glad you are all here. We'll have great guests today. Um, let's make sure everybody's able to get in. Hi, Rohan, Saramber. Hi, David, Lukas, Valentin, Obina, Fat, Sandra, Tiago. Great to have you. Okay, we'll let people come in. Uh, but in the meantime, let me quickly run some announcements. Um, in the upcoming weeks and months, we'll have pretty exciting events at TE Academy. So no matter where you study, no matter where you are, we have online sessions. Um, and we have a very special event uh, coming up in Paris. Uh, you might have heard of EFCC. It's the largest Ethereum conference in Europe. And we'll organize a full day of token engineering talks on Wednesday, July 17th. And in addition to that, we'll run the first token engineering bar camp. It's the first um, dedicated uh, get together of the token engineering community as a side event of ECC. If you ever have been in Paris during EFCC, it's a full week of events, uh, pretty much like if Denver in the US, uh, in Europe, it's EFCC uh, with a hackathon with uh, around, I don't know, 50 to 100 side events and parties. And we'll run a token engineering bar camp on July 22nd. It's a, a Saturday. And this bar camp is by the community for the community, meaning it's an unconference format. We'll have an agenda making session in the morning. Everybody's welcome to pitch own workshops. I already had some conversations with first speakers, so expect to have a cool crowd of token engineering people, professionals, researchers, TE Academy people there on site. And we would be so happy to have you there and meet you in person. Uh, finally, after dozens of online events again meeting in person would be so cool so mark your calendar and i'll drop the um registration link here you can find it in the chat um the second event i'd like to highlight is a webinar that will run with uh in collaboration with stella achenbach stella achenbach has been um over the last couple of months, actually since launch of T Fundamentals has been a study group host together with Rohan, who is here in the call as well. And she's an, a branding expert. And uh, you probably know that the web free space, I mean, it's all about visibility. It's all about uh, finding your own special, um, your own skills, and then also land with your own skills in DAOs and crypto projects. And for token engineers, this is particularly challenging because token engineering is such a new discipline as well. And Stella will run a webinar on how to develop your personal branding and become visible in the space and uh, become uh, known uh, with your expertise. And this will be on June. 29th, and you can also register. Here's the link as well. And last but not least, we'll have introduction to token engineering, our monthly session for everyone who's interested in token engineering coming up on June 16th. There's also a registration link and you can find it in the chat as well. So I'll, I'm looking forward to meeting you in one of these events, best in all of them. And Fat, you have a question before we start. Yeah, sorry if I'm interrupting, but just a quick question. Uh, these sessions that you're having at ECC, um, would these be recorded by any chance? Um, mm -hmm. If somebody is not able to attend and wants to watch it later? Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just, just a quick question there. Yeah, so we'll have a full day of token engineering talks and panels directly at the main event, ECC, right. and these talks will be recorded. So expect uh, speakers from Gauntlet, from Outlier Ventures, uh, Trent McCarty right. will also be there. Uh, this is recorded. The bar camp talk, since it's super freestyle workshop, won't be recorded. So, I see. Uh, yeah, uh, but All certainly right. you'll hear about cool. these sessions in the aftermath. 
Amazing. Yeah. Thanks for that. Okay. All right. Recording is on. Let's kick off the session about token engineering careers. And I'm glad to have two people who really can speak from first hand experience about this topic. It's Ukesh. He started the Polish token engineering study group at TE Academy, and he's founder of Tokenomia Pro, a consulting agency for token engineering. And I think uh, overall web free services for sure. You will uh, tell us more in a minute, Lukash. And with Lukash, we have uh, his colleague David with us. Let me check. Uh, David, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Ah, you're here. Perfect. And there it's, I think it's a nice story how you met Vukash and David and also now, um, yeah, how you became a token engineer. What's your background? This is should be all topic of today. I think we have some uh, talk style um, conversation and I'm sure Vukash and David, you will be glad to take questions from the audience. So feel free to whenever you have a question, drop it to the chat or switch on your mic. I'm happy to. Uh, yeah, have a casual conversation on token engineering careers. Thanks for coming, Bukesh and David, and I hand over the mic to you. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, maybe a little bit of start, we will introduce ourselves. I do prepare a little bit of, uh, let's say, sneak peek of behind the scenes for you uh, today. Um, but also be aware that I do like to talk a lot, especially about the topics that I'm excited about. So feel free to also interrupt me and that will be totally fine. Anyway, uh, going back about the whole whole story of uh, the Tokonomia Pro and also how David ended up uh, working for us, because I think that's the most important here today. So Tokonomia Pro started uh, at the end of uh, 2021, which was basically my and, uh, the, and the other co-founder answer for what we've seen in the crypto industry, uh, meaning we wanted to uh, and still want to bring all of the good parts from our experience in different companies, more major companies, let's call it like that, into the uh, new crypto crazy young world, right? So we can create this mix where there are fundamentals, and, but there is also this innovation that is happening in the place. So long story short, that's why our mission is to contribute to create sustainable token-based crypto economic systems. This is, this is what we do because we do believe that uh, the opportunity and potential that is behind uh, token-based systems is something that we can really leverage in, in the future as some people in general. And we in Tokenoma Pro, we are doing it um, in two ways. So one is through the token engineering services. So basically providing the services of designing, modeling and simulations of crypto economic systems for our clients. And the second way how we are doing that is through auditing. So we do audits for existing token economies in order to evaluate them, are they sustainable or not, um, what to fix in them, et cetera, et cetera. So this is um, this is the short story of Tokenomia Pro. We started as a uh, kind of all-in-one agency where we helped our clients to go through the whole tokenization process, from ideation through the implementation system on the on the blockchain. However, from some time from some time we are doubling down on the token engineering itself, on modeling and simulations because. This is the field where we are mostly feeling excited with. This is something that we really love to do. And this is something where we feel we are providing the, the greatest value. And going back to the story of Token Engineering Academy, I think I was on the first Zoom call. Wow, I, I do believe that was one of the first in general of Token engineer, uh, token engineering. It it was uh, there was no token engineering academy back in the days, as far as I remember. I think so. There was only token engineering, and there was some calls on Zoom, some initial calls where I just started to attend as a listener um, because I was excited about all of the possibilities of token economy. Then with token engineering academy, 
uh, with this whole idea and my already existing experience of cooperating with different universities, I decided to contribute by running this uh, uh, Polish study group. Uh, why Polish? Because uh, there were already plenty of uh, English one. So, I mean, the, the, there was no sense for me to run another one that is in English. So I decided to run, run, to run one in Polish because I've seen that there is uh, some demand in uh, in country that I'm coming from to learn all of this um, stuff about token engineering. And fast forward, um, we've started the group, the first season, right now we're running the second one. The first season and we started, there was like around 20 people there. And across the whole course of the, of the studying, uh, David came up to me as one of the person who is like mo most curious about what we are talking with. He, he was making uh, you know, proper questions and also providing good answers. And I just, you know, enjoyed uh, discussions with him. So I asked him, hey, maybe, you know, you can chat later about opportunity to work with us. I mean, no one knows who will see how we will end up. Uh, but we are here where David is working for us already. I don't know, David, because time is running out so fast, like four, five, six months. I think six. six yeah, I think it's seven. already six. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, but anyway, so David joined us and what we are doing, etc. This is something that uh, I will show you in a minute. Uh, before that, I will also pass my voice uh, to David to share his perspective on, on, on this story. And uh, yeah, fast forward, uh, David is uh, working with us and it's a great collaboration so far. He already onboarded. Uh, his uh, friend from uh, uh, from studies, who has a lot of um, uh, knowledge around statistics, uh, mathematical formulation. So all of this stuff that is, I think, most challenging in the Token Engineering Academy course itself. And right now, Nikodem, who is um, who is who is another person in our team. He joined the season two of Polish Token Engineering Academy study group to learn more about the whole crypto, like for example, AMMs and so on. So to widen his uh, his knowledge around these topics. So now I will stop and maybe David, you can tell a little bit of your story about how how you even joined this, the, the study group and how it was for you to uh, work for us so far. Yeah, of course, thanks Lukasz. So um, my experience may seem quite surprising, uh, but token engineering combines many disciplines uh, and many skills are needed for this job. Uh, but about me, um, I have a technical background. Uh, I have graduated uh, as an automation system engineer at uh, AGH in Krakow. Um, while studying, I was working in a very different place. Uh, including a coffee manager uh, or in uh, artificial sun laboratory. Um, after graduation, uh, I was working uh, like an automation uh, system engineer, where I uh, design, programmed, and start up uh, production line. Uh, I mentioned that uh, token engineering uh, combines many disciplines and, sk and skills, uh, and I have a great uh, example. Um, this example is uh, Machinations. Machinations is a program for people who may don't know this program. It's a program to make a high-level simulation. Uh, and Machinations is a very similar to the program uh, which I uh, in which I make my uh, engineering thesis, uh, LabVIEW. Um, then I was simulating a navigation system. Now uh, I will I simulating economic system. Um, so after working in uh, in LabVIEW, getting start in machination is uh, for me uh, is a piece of cake. Was a piece of cake. Um, and another uh, great example, uh, it's uh, my programming uh, experience, uh, which I gained uh, both to at the university on uh, and at on uh, at work. Uh, and it was extremely useful when I start modeling crypto economic uh, system in CatCat. 
Um, and what's more, um, I have been interested uh, in, in crypto in Web3 Science 2020. Uh, however, uh, I was missing the basic related to token engineering, relating to uh, working exchange, and for example, I don't know how working uh, liquidity pool. Um, and then uh, I gained this uh, knowledge uh, during the first edition of Token Engineering uh, Academy uh, group. I spent uh, every Monday, uh, every Monday evenings uh, for uh, four, five months uh, at Token Engineering Materials. Um, and during this edition, I was uh, also able to meet uh, Lukasz. And later, um, I get a job as a, one of the first token engineer in Poland, and here we are. The first one, not one of the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first one. That's cool to hear. Um, and uh, one question, do you usually speak Polish in your group or English? Because, I mean, so many things in token engineering are English and the terms are coined in English. So the industry terms, uh, most of them in English, yeah, yeah. because like translation to Polish, it most likely doesn't make any sense. So it's kind of mixed. Okay, cool. But it's really cool to see this was a, um, yeah, uh, also an unplanned move, but I'm so glad to hear that the study group continues. And I think you started in September or October last year, right? So it's a couple of months and it turned out to be also a cool network and um, instrument for Tokenomia Pro even to educate your own um, team. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I started because I just wanted to find the people that are excited to uh, ask me about the whole field. And then I realized that, hey, I mean, some of these people can work with me in my company, right? So that's uh, that was a nice addition. And then right now it's another one, which is, hey, I can onboard new people uh, during the Token Engineering Academy study group. So yeah, for a son business owner, that's a, that's a great tool for me. Awesome. I let you continue. Or uh, do we have any questions from the audience so far? Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on. Yeah, so maybe I think what is uh, what will be most interesting. So kind of my initial plan for how we can run this talk is I'm going to share with you some practical examples of what we do. And please be aware that um, I do know that different uh, companies or different uh, also token engineers and freelancers uh, my, may have different approach. So this is this can always vary. Uh, however, at the end of the day, I do believe that uh, all of us, uh, while may take different paths, we are ending up uh, at the same goal with the same uh, high quality value for, for the clients or for the community. And I will run through different examples and then maybe we can switch to the topic of, okay, what skills are needed for people in order to create and or work with the stuff that I'm going to show you. So, uh, so maybe, maybe this is uh, this is the plan how you how you can proceed. Regarding the the clients itself and uh, what we do, so the clients vary, but the the ones that are gaining the biggest value and are mostly. Uh, mostly aware about the need of modeling and uh, the simulations are for me these are two categories so one is uh, defi decentralized finance and the other one is uh, gamify so basically gaming on on web3 and these are the two examples that i'm going to to show you today and uh, i was curious about the presentation itself as we're discovering with our tokenization of etfs yeah tokenization of etfs this is the project that we we are working on uh, we have such client where we are providing uh, i'm answering Wojtek question by the way hey Wojtek, long time we'll see uh, that's that's cool that you joined uh, anyway i will show some examples how it looks like but uh, long story short it's totally uh, possible so during the token engineering academy 
he, there was this division and description of the process uh, around different phases. And this is also the way, this is similar way how we do work. So let me show you, let me share my screen. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, can you see it? Uh, it's a mirror board. Yeah, we can see okay, it. That's great. Okay, because now, okay, that's cool. Uh, so also this is something that probably uh, some of you will be able to see on uh, uh, our social media channels, my private one or Tokenomia Pro, because we are sharing this stuff uh, as well. So here you, you can see the, the beginning of the whole process. So basically what we are doing is, uh, of course, we are gathering the requirements from, from the client, all of the materials. And we are starting this uh, first phase of system requirements where we are taking all of the information that we have. We are making our questions, specifying all of the uh, different um, scopes of the context we have here with the client. And then we are starting initially to draw some stock and flow models, which I think was also part of the course, in order also to help our client to understand, okay, uh, like, for example, you are right, the, the, there has to be some inflow, some outflow, and there are some dependencies. This really helps in the whole discussions with, with the client around how system should proceed. So you can see here everything, like you need to put here all of the stuff related to mathematics, all of the uh, parameters. We are identifying here also like all of uh, all of the assets that are happening in the whole ecosystem, uh, in-game currencies uh, and everything up to, of course, tokenomics. Um, uh, that is in every project with, with the token, some revenue streams, et cetera, et cetera, and, and some benchmarking. So this is where we start and this process, of course, I'm not going to show you all of the details and, and so on. The most important point here is that you need to invest your time in, and you want to do it uh, because this is also something that we, that we learned across the journey, that you want to invest as much time as possible in order to first understand the project that you are working on. Uh, because the client has the biggest knowledge around it and you need to understand the whole scope. You need to understand all of the inflows, outflows, dependencies. And on top of that, you need to be able to specify together with client, what are the, what is the expected analysis and what are the specific questions that clients want to answer uh, through simulations. So I'm mentioning about that because um, we learned this hard way in the past that we jump too quickly into simulations uh, before really focusing together with client in, into understanding of what is the expectations on top of the simulations that we can bring. Because in theory, you can basically model and simulate whatever you can, right? But there is always constraint of uh, uh, budget of financial budget and also time budget, right? So there is always this deadline of how much money do we have and how long uh, it can take for us. So that's why we need to focus on what is the most important part and abstract out other parts of the systems of the system that are not so important and uh, from, from the economic perspective of the whole system. And then on top of this and many, many uh, discussions with clients, we are ending up with, with the document that we are calling model design document. Um, let me maybe try to, I can't see uh, my screen that I'm sharing. I mean, I, I'm not able to see how you can see that. So we see the it's... agenda now. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But if it's too small or something like that, please let me know so, so I can make it bigger. So here is the agenda of the model design document. So here, as you can see, there is this requirements analysis. And this is mm, the crucial part, I would say. This is the crucial input for the rest of the, of the process. If this is uh, done wrong, then the rest of the process will also harm the quality of the deliverable of the, of the whole uh, token engineering process. So first of all, of course, we need to state the goals. We are treating everything as a system. So each of the system has some goals. So each of the system needs to optimize for something 
because uh, we can't, mm, there are always the situations where there can be like contradicting goals and we need to just pick, okay, the, the function for which we are going to optimize. So this is what we are stating. We are stating also the client's questions that simulations should answer. And I think this is a, this is a good tip to put it like that. Also within the discussion with client, with this interaction and communication. So bring me the, the questions that you would like to answer. Of course, we are helping with stating proper questions. Um, because then at the end of the day, when you will see simulation report, simulation report besides all of the you know, statistics, mathematics, charts, and so on, and insights, the main goal is to answer the question, basically. Um, so that's why it's also an important point. Assumptions that we are taking because you have to take some assumptions, as I mentioned, because of the budget constraints. Expected analysis, uh, the scope that model is going to cover. And what are the system assets? What are the mechanics in the systems? What are the parameters? What are the metrics that we would like to uh, monitor for the whole simulations? Glossary of terms, um, because you know uh, clients doesn't have to be so knowledgeable about the crypto space itself and all of the different uh, meanings of some acronyms and so on. Then we are providing stock and flow model. Uh, I will show you in a minute. Mathematical specification which describes all of the inflows, outflows, and, um, uh, and conditions in the system. Then it also we are providing definition of the agents and some conclusions and the next steps. So this document itself has uh, more than 80 pages. So we are not going, of course, to read all of them right now. I'm going to scroll through it and show you some most, some most interesting part around it. But here it is just to you know show you the, the volume of work that is needed in order to really understand the system and identify what is happening there so you can go and start to model that. So let me maybe just scroll. Here you can see different, this is, uh, yeah, this is tokenomics. Here you can see the different uh, specification of parameters. And there are parameters related to the whole system or to specific mechanics in the system where we are identifying, okay, what, what will be the starting value? What will be the initial range um, of uh, the possible, uh, possible numbers that we are going to model? What will be the probabilistic distribution? So I'm scrolling down and then maybe let's look at, uh, there will be stock and flow. Yeah, I'm scrolling. So here are all of the parameters. So as you can see, and I think this is a good lesson for people that uh, would like to do this job and uh, never went through this process. It, this is what you need to like provide. Like, so you need to be, you need to have this trait of person who really likes to deep dive into stuff and it's not bored by it because you just need to like it. You just need to like uh, deep dive and identify everything that is happening. Here you can see stock and flow. Let me maybe switch to Miro. So here, like, for example, we are providing the high level one, but then also a specific one yeah, about the, the assets in the system, like what is what is happening, what are the sources, uh, drains, et cetera, et cetera, which are described here. We didn't put a lot of information here on the lines because it will be too messy, but we do have indication in the document itself, to the reference, so everyone will know uh, where is the specific mathematical formula uh, and where we are using it. Yeah, I'm still scrolling. And here there is mathematical specification, as you can see. And within these projects, we identify 40 of them. And there are also, of course, bookmarks, so we can navigate easily on top of this document. But again, as you see, everything needs to be described mathematically. Why? Because when you will do your model, you need to know specifically how this model should behave. So that's why uh, we put a lot of focus on this part as well. Yeah, let me scroll down. Yeah, there is plenty of that. So again, uh, what is described through mathematical specification? Uh, for example, all of the inflows to specific sto uh, stock, all of the outflows to specific stock, and all of the dependencies between the either inflows, outflows, or the stocks itself. So this is what we are describing and any other stuff that is uh, that is needed 
uh, that is maybe not related with, uh, with the diagram itself. And then at the end of the day, definition of all agents. This is um, kind of additional. It, it depends. Uh, it's not always that we are providing that. But this also helps with this ecosystem mapping. We are doing it in our own way a little bit. Let's call it like that. Uh, the one that we found most helpful. But the, the biggest uh, value that is bringing, besides identifying the agents itself and what is their contribution to the system, uh, are these two things, which is, OK, there is some, there is some agent in the system uh, yeah, like for example, players, and we are able to identify, okay, what is your asset and what are your capabilities, depending on the on the definition and so on. And then we can map it to the value exchange to understand, is there really some interaction going on or not? Because you are going to need it in low-level simulation, agent-based simulation that we are providing in CatCat. So this is system requirements phase for gamify project and uh, we are ending uh, this this phase specific phase with such document of model design document as you can see which then uh, is taking us to rest of the phases um, around modeling and simulation uh, first uh, modeling in machinations and providing high level simulation and then modeling in in cut cut and providing low level agent based simulation but for now i will stop uh, mm -hmm. at the end of this phase and there may be some questions that uh, we can answer yeah let's take a look at the questions in the chat and again also feel free to switch on your mic Tiago um, would you like to ask yourself switch on your mic uh, yeah sure so hello everyone it's a pleasure uh, so regarding your your step one, which was the system requirements that you had your Figma open. Um, I'm asking regarding the like the construct of the sequence of your token engineering process. We're learning the token engineering fundamental score at the first step in the discovery phase was system called a uh, definition. And I'm curious why was that step? I mean, I don't know if that was, it was jumped over or you just assumed that it was taken over from clients questioning. Um, like, how do you treat the, the the system goals definition? Do you take the clients what they want and you don't treat them like you don't elaborate further? Or I don't know, what's, what's your input on that? That's a really good question. And, you know, there is always theory and practice. So in theory, it will be ideal that you can just start with asking client, hey, client, what's the goal of your system? And he will answer you. In practice, it's not happening. Uh, or if it's happening, then this answer will change during the system requirements phase. Because, uh, I mean, at least this is our experience, of course. Uh, so this is uh, always, uh, let's say, uh, subjective opinion. But our experience is that clients will be able to define good enough and solid answer to the question, okay, what is the goal? only during or after system requirements process. Because even when we are interacting with really advanced teams that already did a lot of job during the, the uh, before even reaching out to us, then we are always able to identify something or to make questions that they weren't uh, think of before, which can then impact the perception of, okay, so maybe the goal should be different, or maybe I should think about it another way. So we can like start the process about asking, okay, what's your what's your initial goal? Let's call it like that. And if you can answer that, that's fine. But then answering your second question, I think we are of course engaging with helping the client to to define uh, answer to this question, because this is also why we are here to identify all of the uh, other contexts that he maybe uh, weren't think about and that can impact the the goal of the system itself so i hope this answers your question so yeah it, it, it does i just want to clarify if you believe that the this first step of goal definition is an iterative one and is at the same time uh in conjunction with the, the, the second step so this is requirements like one doesn't exist without the other so you you keep yeah, iterating for, them for time. me for me system requirements and setting up the goal it's 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 the first step this is this is together in parallel this is iterative right. process 
So it's not like, I mean, also what uh, I think everyone needs to be aware is that the, the whole process, it's not like waterfall process. It's not like, okay, there is system requirements, then there is modeling, then there is simulation. No, this is, this is not working this way. And I will put here the tip for people that are looking to, to work in this space. Uh, mindset is crucial here. So you need to be able to work with an agile manner and you need to be able to work on stuff that from the get-go you will know that may never end or will never be, let's say, finished in a way that, okay, we, we end up system requirements process. Here is the document. I show you the document, right? This is version one. This is, this is not set in stone. This is version one. Why? Because then on top of that, we will provide model. Okay, that's cool. And during creating model, we may identify something new that none of us, either our team or, or the, or the uh, client's team were aware of. So what we have to do, we need to go back and change what we need to change or add what we need to add into, into model design document. And then you have version two. And especially when you are at the uh, phase of simulations, when you are starting to answer your questions, then this is the whole, the, the whole let's say, exciting stuff is starting there. Because when you are starting to simulate the whole system, then you are ending up identifying a bunch of different stuff that you weren't really aware of. And then you can you need to be prepared for either going back to changing the model or going even back to the system requirements phase and changing something there. So this is it, I would call it really fluid, like flexible process where you need to be from the get-go aware that you not only can, but sometimes you need to change and switch back to the previous steps. All right, that's that's pretty good answer. Thank you. Cool. Um, we have a lot more questions in the chat. Let's go over them step by step. And Rohan, please keep your question in mind. We'll get back to you in a moment. Mario, you asked which questions you uh, or Rukash found most useful in the discovery phase? Uh, Mario, you mean the questions that we are asking or questions that client is asking? More useful. I think it's from our side. Uh, hi, first, a, a great presentation. Uh, I'm asking to get uh, to extract all the info from the client uh, to define the, the what, what he wants, uh, more or less is, is, is that. So I would say we we had different approaches, but what works best, at least for us again, is that we are operating, we have this visual layer. So we are not, I this is also because of me, I, I never like to talk uh, about some specifics without any visualization of it. So that's why we have this uh, Myro board. That's why we have some initial stock and flows because then, it, we are just like we are pointing in some specific even arrow on the stock and flow and I'm, I'm saying okay so here is your stock for example here is your token right here is the inflow okay so what's the inflow that's the question and then the client's like mm, okay so there are different sources okay what are the sources so we are like really trying uh, not be based on rhetorics on how you, let's say, put your words in a sentence, but be really straight to the point and visualize everything and just pointing it out and saying, okay, what needs to be here in order to avoid any wrong assumptions or wrong understanding of the words that we are saying, especially that, you know, when you are working in an international environment, and this, this is something that I learned in my experience in different companies and so on. This is the best way to avoid this misunderstanding because of the language barrier, because of someone understood something differently. You want to make sure that everything is written down, visualized, and you can just point at it without basically even asking a specific question, but just asking, okay, what needs to be here, right? So this is kind of a tip and, uh, and the one way to approach that. 
the other questions that we find most uh, more useful. Maybe try, I will try to um, to address it in another way. Yeah. What ah, you okay. want to what, what you don't want to do uh, is you don't want to put anyone that you are working with on on this project into let's say a non comfortable situation. So don't ask about the stuff that you have high probability of knowing that your client doesn't doesn't know the answer or he probably will not even understand uh, about what you're asking so maybe maybe this way so i'm not like straight away giving you the specific questions but more like framework for for how to do that because it always also depends on the on the client and project okay but this was already something very useful Thanks. And also thanks for the question, Mario. Artem asks, after simulation stage, are you going to revisit the parameters? For example, lockup and cliff periods of tokens. So that's the whole goal of simulation, yes. So maybe David like... is nodding. Should we let David answer? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um yeah, we exchange the, these parameters. Uh, not only uh, related with uh, cliffs and cliffs period vesting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we can exchange all parameters. Uh, all mechanism uh, is made with parameters, so we can exchange all this. Uh, also, we made um, A and B test. Uh, we make a, mm, a parameter sweep. Uh, so. Yeah, answering yes we can exchange these parameters okay fine i'm going a little bit faster through the questions because we really have a lot uh next one umar is just joining and saw the document asking how can we get a copy of the doc you are using <laughs> you can't <laughs> or you can be our client and then yeah you will have the document okay tiago you asked i mean no no but that's the uh, you know uh just seriously right now mm. so we are also planning with our clients to provide content on top of the work we are doing so i do believe that even in your near future uh, the, there will be clients that will be totally fine with sharing such documents or maybe documents in some limited form because you need to be aware also that for the projects um all of the content around how they approach the work, how they approach fundamentals, about the results of simulations, about the requirements and so on. It's also a valuable thing to share with, with the community. So I do believe at some point in time it will be possible. Uh, yeah, but for now, I, I think we are not at this stage. By the way, Angela, how much time do we have? It's uh, till Yeah, the um, 20 minutes left. Oh, okay. And I okay. just wanted to uh, mention Umar has been writing token about token engineering topics in the past. Pretty cool stuff. Thanks for sharing, Umar. Um, if you are in need of a writer, I would say contact Umar and maybe you can do stuff together. All right. Um, Tiago asked, uh, do you take into consideration knowledge from game theory and behavioral economics into agent-based modeling? Is this something? Yes, uh, that's one of the topics why we even started this company. <laughs> because when uh, back, in the, back in the days I first heard about behavioral economics, I was like, finally, someone stated how it really works like because i was always like it's not that everyone is logic it's not that it's like really one and zero uh, the binary stuff but there are really complex systems when it comes to humans and our behaviors so yes we are using it and it depends again on the constraints so depending on the budget and time constraints either it's used in a way where we are using our own experience and research that we did till this time or books that we've read or articles that we've read and so on. Or if there is some bigger need, like, for example, I do believe there is when it comes to the projects related to the DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, then we are focusing more time on doing some additional research that can be 
uh, or the newest research that can be related to, for example, decision making or some interactions between between the people that are gathered um, on top of some specific uh, project. So yes. Okay, I move on. Next question, Rohan's asking, how much time does it take for each phase? Too much. <laughs> no, but uh, depending, of course, of the scope of the project, but for the bigger ones as games, the system requirements phase, again, it depends of the responsiveness of the clients, of the amount of the existing materials that we can use, of our availability, and so there are many uh, variables in the mix. But long story short, how we are planning that is for the big project, like, like the game, the system requirements phase itself, it's taking one month. That's with, it's not like one month of, you know, the whole thing focused only on that because you are waiting for responses and so on. But still the whole process can take one month and longer, of course. Then uh, the modeling and simulations also, you can assume another each per one month because there is also iterative process. So this is how it looks like. I'm going also to share my screen in the meantime so we can see other deliverables. Mm -hmm. uh, and we still can have some, some questions left, but uh, maybe these questions will be answered. So feel yeah. free to continue. Uh, so then the, the modeling phase, mm, I think if someone doesn't have uh, coding knowledge, uh, the, 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 the Wait a second, it's here. If someone doesn't have the coding knowledge, uh, machinations would be probably a good way to start because it's a visual way. But so this is one of the examples. We have uh, plenty of these different uh, schemas. It sometimes uh, can look a little bit intimidating. So yeah, that's why, for example, there are layers so you can make it more simple. But anyway, so uh, if there are some questions around where we find uh, like where you can contribute as a potential person working in Tokenomia Pro. So there are like mainly, I would say four things. So first one is this whole system requirements phase, because we can just, you know, also be focused, one specific person can be focused only at this phase. Then modeling, which is either modeling in machinations or modeling in CatCat. I, I don't have the code here, so I will not show it, but uh, this is the modeling phase. And then uh, on top of that, simulating the results and what is important, uh, getting uh, getting insights from these results. Uh, that was also the part of some discussions that I have with uh, even some of you that you are here during our recruitment uh, of the process, which is it is one thing to be able to uh, create model and simulate stuff, but it's totally different skill to look at the results and bring some insights on top of that. It's a totally different thing. And also on top of that, it's also a totally different skill to communicate these insights to the client. I think this is the most challenging one, uh, especially for a person who is doing that. And at the end of the day, uh, you would like to you know, brag about, for example, like here, right? Here you can see all of the hundreds of different scenarios that we prepared for one project. Uh, and on top of that, we are providing some, here you can see reports for each specific scenario. Here we can see some aggregated reports that we are providing and sharing some only most important charts with some insights and so on. Uh, and you would like to probably, you know, brag to your client, hey, look at the whole and explain the whole process that you went through. But on the end of the day, client is more uh, willing to know, okay, what the answer is giving me the answer. And then maybe if I will be interested, I would be happy to, to hear about your whole excitement about how you went to this answer, right? And then the, the other stuff, what we are doing is uh, tokenomics audits. So if you think about it, how we are defining that is when you think, for example, about the game, the game for us, it's the whole token-based system. We are calling it system. At, and tokenomics, tokenomics is only part of this system, which is a kind of monetary system of the, of the whole system. That's why we are dividing that into work on tokenomics audit and also work on token engineering process on the whole system. 
And here, what you can see is uh, simulation results that we are also providing on top of existing tokenomics where clients are reaching out to us and saying, okay, I have some tokenomics. And for example, I don't know, I'm struggling with getting the funding because uh, people are telling me that it's not sustainable or I would like to use it as a tool to, to convince the community that uh, this is sustainable stuff and we are thinking about it seriously. So we are modeling different things here and answering the question before, this is exactly what, so imagine like security audit, right? There is security audit for smart contract. So security auditors are finding some bugs and then of course you are fixing it. So the same stuff we are doing here, but with economics audit, where we are finding a lot of different uh, things that you wouldn't uh, like to see in your tokenomics. There is like, for example, also the correlation stuff. There is all of the metrics related to decentralized exchange, where then we are able to identify where do you have bugs in your tokenomics. And then on top of changing all of the parameters related to tokenomics, we are doing kind of retesting, re-auditing with verifying is this solution works. And we can show you like different, even investor strategies where they would like to liquidate. Is it like time-based trigger? Is it like a gain-based trigger? Uh, and all of the different strategies around pretty much anything in parameters when it comes to, uh, to tokenomics. Like for example, what is the minimal demand needed in order to sustain some level of price across all of the months? Uh, which can also help to identify for the client of uh, if I'm able to, for example, generate such a demand with the demand characteristic or sources that I'm thinking about for my project. Questions now. I'm mindful of time, so I'm trying to be as brief as possible. <laughs> Yeah, we have 10 minutes left. Let's check um, if we have, yeah, we have more questions in the chat. Um, Sarah Amber is asking, how do you approach system verification? And is this approach fully designed by your team or is it also influenced by client suggestions? Yeah, it's uh, both. I mean, we have some clients that are more knowledgeable uh, about this whole process, let's call it like that or they do have in a team people with some data science background, for example, the machine learning, this kind of things. Um, so then we are working together into identifying of how we can verify the system. Uh, and I would say that we are taking project by project approach. So, so it depends. In most cases on the client side, there is no one who would be able to contribute into that, that discussion. So it, we are verifying it uh, on, let's say, project basis. We are trying to figure out what will be the best way. The whole also the verification and benchmarking things, uh, we even discussed it about it recently with Angela. It's a topic of itself and, and the science of itself. And there's more questions maybe related to this. How do you get clients and leads getting interested in tokenization? Do they come to you or do you do sales, cold sales? Yeah, uh, so I mean, again, it will depend on the company to company. And it also, are you an agency? Are you a freelancer and so on? But it work what worked for us the best is uh, us sharing the knowledge, uh, showing up on different occasions with lectures. So I'm providing a lot of lectures on different conferences, uh, on universities. And this is the way how we are getting the recognition and also the content on YouTube that we have, uh, feel invited. We are discussing them with different uh, professionals in the industry as well. So this is what works for us the best. Uh, the downside is that it requires a lot of time investment, especially from our side to, to do it. So it's not, let's say, scale at, se at uh, sale at scale, but more like, uh, and then the referral network, of course, after clients are, are happy, they are referring us. So this is the, the main driver for us. Cool. Nick is asking, how often do you utilize economic uh, econometrics modeling in your engagements, do you use this to determine input values into your modeling? Sounds also where to start. 
yeah, so we were thinking about it, but at the end of the day, we we found this step as uh, not so needed once we are having the whole mathematical specification on top of the stock and flow model and state space representation. It's it's just enough for us to to go directly into into modeling, not in let's call it Excel itself, uh, but then in CAD CAD or or machinations. And yeah, I think that's that's the answer. Mm -hmm. Um, then there's a question from Tiago. Would you be willing to open source the CAD CAD models? And the second question, what best practices do you consider on your work? That's a good question about open sourcing CAD CAD models. Mm. My answer at this point in time would be the case is that we have this uh, kind of internal need of constantly trying to figure out uh, new and new models for our clients. So if you will imagine, for example, the tokenomics itself, everyone is just doing vesting. We are not like that. We are always trying to figure out something totally new, totally new mechanism. And the case is that we are doing it for clients. So all of the IP rights, because client is paying for that, is going to, to the client. Right, so it's a decision for clients to, to open source it, not for us. Once we will have more time and resources and people that we will be able to run our own project that we can open source, then that's totally fine. But for now, we are so busy with uh, the client work and trying to, to provide some content. That's uh, that's the answer. All right, but, and but yes, I we think... will be willing. Yes. Yeah. I'm pushing you, <laughs> Lukas. Okay. Um, now, finally, uh, we have five minutes left only. This uh, talk has been about token engineering careers. Uh, I'd like to go back to this question. What would be your recommendation for people who want to become token engineers? And is it possible to get an internship at Tokenomia Pro? This was a question from Obina. Yes. The short answer: It's it's possible. Great. What what where to send the application to? Yeah, you can <laughs> you can join our Discord channel or find me on the Discord channel of Token Engineering Academy. Some people know that I have some delays, so sorry for that. I mean, we will we will get back to it. I mean, this is yeah what I'm saying. We are really really busy. We are so busy that we don't have time to find new people to the team. So that's that's the challenge. So yes, internship is possible. Then it, what was the second one? Uh, uh, best, yeah, recommendations yeah. for people who want to become token engineers. So again, I don't want to put this shameless plug, but like seriously, follow my social media private one it, and Tokenomia Pro if you want, because I'm sharing such tips there. Like for example, recently I've put info about five books that you need to read in order to be token engineer. So that's kind of the tips that I like to share. And recommendations. It, you need to really like this stuff. You need to be constantly curious because, uh, as you was as you were able to see on top of my documents, uh, it's not an easy job. It's really hard uh, when it comes to identifying all of the requirements and providing valuable uh, insights for the client. So, and also you are working on some critical infrastructure here. So we, you need to be able to um, handle the pressure because the pressure is here, that's for sure. Um, and it's basically like, you know, operation on open, open heart on your client's uh, business. So it's, uh, you really need to be able to, to take ownership of things. And regarding the knowledge, uh, how I like to call it the, the knowledge profile, the best one, it's on T-shaped which is you need to have a broad knowledge from different topics where I think the best describes that this, this diagram, this flower from token economy book. Uh, so you need to be curious about like game theory, behavioral economics, psychology, computer science, all of this stuff, like seriously, it's, it's not optional, not really. I mean, you can have some role that is focusing on specific part, but in general that's uh, recommended. 
and you need to be specialized in some specific thing in, uh, from from all of this uh, stack of uh, of uh, sciences that that I've mentioned. Mm. All right, if you can, Rukash, uh, feel free to drop uh, your Twitter to the chat so that people can follow you. Yeah, I even today posted a video what we were doing with David before mm -hmm. the meeting, so you can see how crazy it can be. So you <laughs> okay. need to have a large monitor, that's for sure. But uh, also crypto, practical crypto knowledge would be really helpful mm -hmm. uh, because then you will be able to understand also the client and the challenges that are in the space itself. To what extent um, is our is knowledge about smart contracts the, really the technical no, the te specialties of smart contracts and blockchain? Technical, not really. No, I would say more from user perspective. Mm -hmm. So try to, to uh, invest maybe in some projects, you know, the, the, the amount of money that you can lost basically, of course, so really small amounts so you can understand what is the process, you can feel these emotions, you can engage with some community, try to engage with some DAO, try to maybe uh, go to some different Discord channels and in, in this way, not really smart contracts knowledge, no. Okay, cool. I know that we haven't been able to go over 100% of the question. I hope we covered most of them. But in case you'd like to reach out to Rukash, uh, he dropped his Twitter. Uh, I um, took the liberty to drop your Discord. Uh, in case you'd like to apply for an internship, um, then feel free to reach out. Thank you so much, Rukash and David, for coming. Um, I hope it won't be the last chance to discuss token engineering and how to become token engineering. Um, thank you for sharing these, um, yeah, practical perspective, really valuable. And thank you all for coming to this session. See you on our Discord or at the bar camp in Paris or one of our upcoming events. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, look, by the way, are you going to, to East Paris? Are you going to Paris? I will decide today. <laughs> Okay, I tried awesome. to convince him, sent him messages that he should be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. See thank you, you guys. Good afternoon. Bye.